Hello, internet friends, and welcome to the not only first video recording on my new system, but the Survival Hunter second pass here in the Legion beta. So, I'm probably gonna say this like 900 times in this video, but please be warned, numbers are not tuned right now. Number testing is still going on currently. My headset's too loud, I couldn't hear myself talk. And there are a couple of things right now for survival that are just like doing way too much damage, it feels like. Because your core rotation should not be completely devalued by one talent. But again, I'll go over that as we go through it. We'll go through the basic spell book. We'll go over spells, animations, and all that kind of good stuff. We'll also be going over, of course, every artifact perk that's available. And before anyone asks and freaks out, exotic pets are only for beast mastery hunters. The wolf you're seeing beside me is not Hati, different model entirely. I'm a survival hunter, as you can see here by the specialization. But this is a wolf from Mr. Pandaria Land because the wolf model you get as a default hunter is awful. And I don't want to have all my pet testing with this really terrible looking circa 1998 World of Warcraft modeled wolf. So this is a wolf from Mr. Pandaria, the cool lightning wolf that had a big sword in its mouth, but if you wanted to know, there you go. But overall survival, before we get into anything deep, is that the gameplay loop, I feel, is very slow and methodical. I put some notes down here real quick. So yeah, so I put that overall survival feels very pre-planned and methodical. Obviously, there's a list of things you want to do in your rotation. There is a priority list, of course, as in any other class. You're not GCD locked anymore. There's no weird garbage shenanigans with like spamming Mongoose Bite as fast as you can. Mongoose Bites has been fixed. Your mastery scaling is still super weird. And uh, a friend of mine, Word Up, said that survival hunters have a very real bonus of being able to more easily manipulate their burst single target and, and in parentheses, AOE sort of windows a lot more frequently during encounters. This cannot be underestimated as many other DPS roles have much longer periods of time to wait between these rotation cycles. But of course, as a mythic raid, you're not going to really be using a survival hunter, I don't think, unless like one of your main melee DPS already is going to go survival hunter for whatever reason, which is fine. But like in a normal heroic raid, yeah, sure, go for it. But mythic raids only have so many spots, right? You only have so many melee spots in a raid. So having the opportunity to bring a survival hunter that is like a ranged character going melee is like never really gonna happen very often because you just you, you can't really you have three to five spots normally. You're not gonna have nine melee in a raid in Mythic. You're just not gonna have that. Normally it's just a ra more ranged heavy m Mythic raid. It's just how it works easily. You already got two tanks in there. If you also add in five melee, there's your seven melee already. And then you've got to have enough room for four or five healers, and then you'll have so much room for ranged DPS. So, Survival Hunter's going to be in a weird spot. But overall, I think its damage can be fine. It has interesting competitive natures, regardless of how uh, they might be balanced and tuned in the future here. I'll just go over some abilities real quick. You're going to see artifact stuff fly off, I'm sure. But overall, just what the spec looks like here before I start yammering on more about the basic spellbook. So, regardless of what you're seeing right now, there are some talents and interactions going. Where's my pet? What are you doing? Hey, what are you- you're way back there. What are you doing? You weirdo. Overall, DPS-wise, Survival Hunter will probably be stacking Haste, then Mastery, then Crit, and then Versatility, depending on how their Mastery actually scales. But for the most part, they have some cool-looking mechanics. They, they look really impressive, to the most part. You did see your artifact talent there, the Fury of the Eagle. It is a reskinned Fist of Fury. Sadly, it's one of the big things that looks kind of dumb because you're not a monk, so you actually cannot move and channel that ability at the same time. Wow, the, the reset string right there is actually pretty good. But you're kind of seeing me play a, a bad rotation right now, right? I'm not being min maxi. I'm not totally working around my flanking strike timing window. And I don't have a talent layout that's going to be incredibly beneficial to do this. But just to show you how the animations and how they look. Again, you cannot move and cast Fury of the Eagle, which I'll show more in the future. But just get some animations out there that it looks pretty nice. I mean, the animations look pretty nice overall for the, the hunter. The survival hunter, rather. So, let us look at the basic spellbook. I'm going to take off my Talon Claw, which is your artifact weapon. 
I don't want them to. There are going to still be some things that are messing up with the the talents uh, and um, well, talents that mess up things in the spellbook here, but I'll go over them one at a time as they become available. So your passive you have here is Survivalist. After killing a target, you and your pet gain 15% health over 10 seconds. It's just a heal. When you kill something, you and your pet will heal together. Only if you gain a killing blow, though. So like in a raid setting, this probably will never actually happen unless you actually gain a killing blow on a target. So it's nice for questing. It's kind of how Survival Hunter works. You are a survivalist, which does make sense. Your mastery, as I went over a little bit now to go a little bit deeper, is that your pet attacks, which I could be corrected here, but I don't know if it's only autos. I think it's attacks, like specials. But normally when Blizzard says attacks, it means everything. Auto attacks and special attacks. But that could be a tuning point right now. And you have a 4% chance, roughly right now, to gain you an additional charge of Mongoose Bite. So your pet can give you Mongoose Bite charges. Mongoose Bite is your core rotational ability. Mongoose Bite, as you were seeing there, has been changed. Now it is a cooldown reduced by haste, 12 seconds base reduced by haste, where you do a very heavy physical damage attack and you give yourself a buff called Mongoose Fury. Mongoose Fury stacks up to six times. It lasts 12 seconds. Always and forever will it last 12 seconds, albeit one other ability that can extend the duration. But for every stack of Mongoose Fury you have, it's 50% more damage on a Mongoose Bite. At 300% damage at, at six stacks. So, but you only have 12 seconds in this window once you hit your first Mongoose Bite to maintain that. So how you maintain that or have more of them outside of talents, which we'll go into later, is your hunting companion proccing. And your mastery comes from just your amount of mastery you have on your gear, but only 20% of that actually is effective on your hunting companion passive. Which I think is like really strange because it doesn't... <sighs> Looking at your character sheet right now, without massing over, you're like, okay, I have 16% mastery, that's not too bad. But then you, you realize that you actually only have like 4% because only 20% of your actual overall mastery is a thing. But they're keeping mastery scaling the same way for everything else, right? Like you have 8% base, then plus your, your scaling stats on your gear, your rating. But it feels weird that you're looking at your, your character sheet and it's just wrong. And that was the same way I reported back in the original build where I, I tested Survival Hunter on December 11th, 2015. I've been testing this expansion for a very long time. But uh, it, it just... It, if it's going to be a scaling thing where you get less overall mastery per point, nothing else is affected by mastery, by the way, nothing. Then why doesn't it just tell you the actual amount you're getting? You know, like, I don't know why it doesn't do that. It's just weird. But hunting companion right here. So your pet's attacks have a chance to gain you an initial charge of mongoose bite. Again, I don't know if it's usually they say auto attacks for auto attacks or special attacks for special. So attacks, I think, would mean anything, which is fine. But it's a little bit confusing. I wish it was a little bit more clear. So you have Wing Clip, which is just your 30 focus melee ranged, um, I guess, it's hamstring with no damage, right? You still have traps, of course. You have Freezing Trap, Explosive Trap, and Tar Trap. The cooldowns you're seeing here are being reduced by a talent I currently have, which is the easiest one to show. That is actually your place talents. You have this talent tier real quick here that is also DPS and utility at the same way. I'll go over that more in talents later on, but we're going about that. So Explosive Trap is totally part of the single target rotation because it deals initial damage and has a really, really good dot over time. Also, it's magic damage. So thematically, I was looking at the Survival Hunter in a weird way during testing in the VOD, which again, if you want to see the VOD, my notes, the bug report, ways to support my stream and the channel right here, video description box below, as well as the link to the add-on I'm using right here. I didn't set at the beginning of the video. I got a little sidetracked, but my video description boxes are very thorough. Tons of knowledge information down there and links and things and buttons and all that good stuff. So go there if you want more. If you want to watch the entire VOD. But so you have Freezing Trap, which is just the Frost Trap, you know, the single target Freezing Trap. Right? The same thing it does before. It's a one minute duration if you need to do that. They all have their own cooldown. Their, the abilities are all off cooldown. Tar Trap now is replacing the Frost Trap, which will create a pool of slowing tar, which the graphic for it is like green defile. 
But right now, it doesn't really load properly around hitboxes and stuff, so you can only see like a little bit of it right there. But it should be like a square of, of gross tar. But that's the, the slowing effect you're getting right there for tar trap. And then, of course, you have explosive. Now, remember, as you saw here, tar trap is trap launchered, right? And freezing trap is trap launchered. Explosive trap is not trap launchered. You just cast it, and it blows up when it contacts an enemy. You toss a fire trap on the ground in front of you that explodes when an enemy approaches. So if you're a melee ranger, it'll automatically explode. That deals fire damage to all enemies and within five yards, and then an additional amount over 10 seconds. The same amount of initial hit damage is the same amount you get from the dot. But it's a melee ability now. It's not a trap launcher thing. Your other two are trap launcher, just not that one. You still have all your pet utility here with Beast Lord, Dismiss Pet, Feed Pet, Mend Pet, and Tame Beast. You have Muzzle, which is your melee interrupt here, which I'll show off again. Uh, Animation-wise, it's just a backspin interrupt. Nothing fancy. I kind of wish you would, like, hit them with the butt of your um, Talon Claw, your, your spear here, but it doesn't. Additionally, while I'm sitting here right now, there is still a passive that's affecting the auto-attack distance of the Survival Hunter, being eight yards, not five, which has been removed, but is still actually being in the code. So I'm assuming this will be removed soon. You're not supposed to have an eight yard melee range, which is just kind of awkward. You're not a Moonkin or a Balance Affinity Druid of any description. But for a fantasy standpoint, it was neat because it was like, you have a giant spear, you have a longer reach, but it doesn't work out well in practice, I think overall. So if they remove it, you'll be like here, like a normal melee range, right? That's totally fine. Right now, it's just not not working, apparently, and it's could probably be a bug. Um, what else we got to have here? We have Hatchet Toss, which does not require a weapon. It's just your ranged pulling ability. You just throw an axe. It's like Heroic Throw with no cooldown, but does no damage. Just a pulling ability. But the animation also, like, breaks. Like, it doesn't actually link up properly. Could be just a bug. You have Harpoon, which you saw there originally. I'm going to go back to my Eagle Spear here. Even though it's not even called that anymore, it's called Talon Claw, the Eagle Spear, Spear of the Wild Gods, Talon Claw. Bearing many names and many blessings, this is a weapon of legends. But anyway, Harpoon is a 5 to 40 yard uh, charge. You pull yourself toward the target, 40 yards away, right here. You'll also root the target in place for 3 seconds, and then you pull yourself to them on a 20 second cooldown. Which, it's still wild that it's that far of a distance. 40 yards is huge. No other melee can do that unless you're a warrior. So, like other, other classes have sprints and stuff. But that is insane. This is, this is, that's bonkers. That's bonkers right there. It's really good. Overall, this Rebel Hunter has lots of movement. You still have Flare, which I was told that the animation for Flare has been improved. So you actually have the flare on the ground, but then the flare stays in the air right here, and it will slowly descend over the duration of the spell, which is kind of cool. Exhilaration is baseline now, a 30% self-heal and a 100% heal on your pet. Two-minute cooldown. Feign death is, of course, still here. Ugh, you fall over and you feign death. And then you can get back up, and your body jumps in the air all awkwardly. Uh, carve is your AoE, but does not require a target. It is basically the exact same effect of, like, um, Revenge or, I guess, Swipe. Like, a lot of AoEs now don't require a target to be used, but it's just a frontal cone, 120-degree, um, eight-yard radius AoE cleave. That's it. It's very, very, very simple, but that's your rotational, really small, simple AoE component, where overall the Swirtle Hunter has a lot of other options they can use for AoE. Call Pet, of course, is here. You can call the crappy wolf that I tamed, or Zappy, which is my nice pet. And you can have to five pets in one call pet before you put in the stable. And you have your three aspects. Aspect of the cheetah, which is a sprint. It's a 90% for three seconds, and then 30 for nine seconds. And that's a three-minute cooldown. You have aspect of the eagle, which is your only baseline DPS cooldown. We're for a two-minute cooldown. Uh, it grants you and your pet 10% increased critical strike chance on all abilities and increases your chance to gain charges of Mongoose Bite by 100%. So that means that the base amount is like 4% right now, right? So under the effect of Aspect of the Eagle, you have double the chance because it gives a 100% base chance, making it 8%, right? Which is, that's good, right? You gain Mongoose Synergy during your Aspect of the Eagle and you gain extra crit. 
which is the extra crit is fine, but it's not a huge deal. But it's mostly the mongoose bite reset chance doubles baseline. Then you have aspect of the turtle. You notice that deterrence is gone. Aspect of the turtle is a three minute cooldown where you deflect all incoming attacks, not reflect. It's not mirrored blades. It will deflect them. So if people uh, shoot you with like shadow bolts or whatever, they will just be deflected. They will just be dissolved into the ether. But it also reduces all damage you take by 30% for AoE or dots or whatever for eight seconds, but you cannot attack during turtle. So you can't even right click to attack during the turtle stance. You just, you can't even do it. You can't do it. You can throw a spell off, which is actually interesting that you can throw spells, but you can't physically attack. So spell usage can be cast during turtle, but not melee attacks or anything like that. You can't even auto attack to punch the guy. I can punch the guy right now, no problem. The little dummy gets punched, get, get punched from really far away. So DPS wise now, as I brought up Aspect of the Eagle, having a double your base chance to proc Mongoose via your hunting companion. We went over Mongoose Bite already. So what can also reset Mongoose Bite is the ability called Flanking Strike, which is <sighs> baseline Flanking Strike, which is reduced by haste. The six second cooldown reduced by haste, just like how Mongoose Bite is 12 seconds reduced by haste. Haste is very good for their, hun their hunter. Uh, reduces the global cooldown, reduces your the uh, recharge time on Mongoose Bite and on Flanking Strike. Also gives you more focus generation. Focus generation is still from haste. Right there, increases your attack speed and focus generation, so haste is very good. But Flanking Strike is the only ability baseline that gives you any pet synergy. And I was thinking about this for Sorrel Hunter on live, is it has like explosive shot and like black arrow and stuff, and it's like dot based, like kind of procy RNG, and you don't have like a lot of synergy with your pet anyway. So from a fantasy standpoint, I guess it makes sense. But from an overall gameplay standpoint, this is your only ability that gives you any pet synergy, which is a coordinated attack on the target where you deal physical damage and your pet deals physical damage. If the target is attacking you, however, your pet will deal 50% increased damage and 400% increased threat. Otherwise, if it's attacking your pet or not your pet or you, like attacking a tank, for example, your attack deals more damage. And Flanking Strike has double the normal chance to proc to proc, to proc, and trigger Hunting Companion. So by default, Flanking Strike has baseline times two, double the chance, so it's 8%. But if you double the baseline chance through Eagle to 8%, your Flanking Strike then has a 16% chance during Eagle to give you a Mongoose Bite charge. Not only does your, your pet attacks by default in Eagle have an 8% chance, then Flanking Strike will have a 16% chance to give you a charge as well. Which is also, again, why it's strange looking at your mastery, is that the 16% chance you see right there is when you're under Eagle and you use Flanking Strike only. But it's still confusing because all that stuff I just said. <laughs> you still have Eagle Eye, of course. We can Eagle Eye around and look at stuff. Nah. No more Eyes of the Beast. R.I.P. Eyes of the Beast. Moment of silence for Eyes of the Beast. Yeah, there you go. That's enough. And then your other DPS abilities, you have Lacerate, which is back from Vanilla. <clears throat> Sorry about that. 35 focus. It tears a bleeding wound in the target, dealing physical damage over 12 seconds. 10 second cooldown. So 100% up time. You just rotate Lacerate in your cooldown here. And then you also have Raptor Strike, which is just 25 focus. It is your lowest priority. It just does light physical damage, 25 focus, instant, has no cooldown, and it's really kind of awful. It's very, very weak. It is your last priority. It's your filler, but overall, you're really waiting on your focus to dump with Mongoose Bites properly, keeping up Lacerate, Flanking Strike. When you have, when you're outside of the Mongoose window, you Flanking Strike, of course, because of tons of damage and because it can beat you back up to three stacks of Mongoose Bite sooner. And then, of course, during the Mongoose Bite window, you flanking strike to gain you more charges during the window to put out more Mongoose Bite charges. So it has an okay back and forth. It's just kind of weird that it's the only ability of your pet. As you get deeper into the talents, you notice that more and more goes away from that core rotation. But we'll see as we go through here. So again, you saw the basic rotation kind of the earlier there. 
We'll go through the artifact now. Where's my pet at? Why is it not, not charged? It's undefensive, I guess, by why it's not charging. But now, again, the Fury of the Eagle, which I'll show you again, is a frontal cone AoE, which is kind of a very narrow window. It's like an it's like a 70 degree window you saw there. I don't want to make sure I show that off, so you gain Fury of the Eagle. Melee range channeled 45 second cooldown costs nothing. Where you furiously strike all enemies in front of you, dealing a whole bunch of physical damage, and the damage is increased by Mongoose Fury. So if you have six stacks of Mongoose Fury, and you hit Fury of the Eagle, that tooltip damage is multiplied by 300%, which would be well over a million damage. Because you double it, I think you double it again. For 300%, for wow math. So it's huge damage. Like, it's around a million damage right there on Fury of the Eagle if you do a six-stack Mongoose Bite and then use Fury of the Eagle. However, there's one other component you have to make sure you, you take into account here with Fury of the Eagle, is that on the tooltip right here, Fury of the Eagle actually adds duration to your Mongoose Fury window that is equal to the channel time, which then delays it falling off. So you can weave in another Mongoose Bite at the end there, which is pretty nice. And we don't know yet if Haste will, I don't know anyway, if Haste makes the channel time of Fury of the Eagle faster, like it just happens in a shorter window, or you actually gain more chart, more more uh, ticks during that window of channeling, I'm not sure. I would imagine it does the former, where it just makes the channel faster, but I can't really test, so I only have 4% Haste on the, the testing realm right now, and my tooltip's now broken. So I only have so much Haste, I can't really put anything on, I have Versatility Trinkets. Woo. So, I would imagine, though, if the window of time it adds, the three-second base channeling for the Mongoose Bite window is added, regardless of the channel time, haste becomes even better! Because you might even get off more than one Mongoose Bite after you extend the duration or add that three-second window to the Mongoose Fury buff, which is pretty neat. Artifact-wise, I'm gonna be real honest with you right now, Spiral Hunters. Most of your artifact perks are really boring. And I think that's because your base rotation has this arcane mage feel, where you have this back and forth where you don't have a burn conserve phase exactly, but you have this like out of mongoose bite window and in mongoose bite window rotation, where you kind of like save up and build towards it. And then when you're in the mongoose rotation, all you care about is mongoose bite and flanking strike and fury of the eagle if it's off cooldown. And then maybe, maybe keeping up your dots, which like your explosive trap, your lacerate, whatever have you. So overall, I think they made a lot of your artifact stuff kind of lame or boring, I guess. The word is not lame. From a player standpoint, it's kind of lame because they're just kind of like, yay. But you start with Fury of the Eagle. You gain Iron Talons, 8% more physical damage dealt. All right. Sharpened Fang is 10% more damage done by Mongoose Bite. Okay. Hell Carver is carved, deals 10% increased damage for each additional target it hits. So if I do one target carve, we got 20, oh, we got one target carve, 25,000. We got three target carve real quick here would be uh, 28,000. So you just gain more damage per target you actually are hitting with carve. Nice way to help it out. Carve is really weak overall anyway, so not too bad. Raptor's Cry is 15% more damage dealt by Raptor Strike. Which is like, okay, but Raptor Strike is your like least priority ability of all time. You have My Beloved Monster, which is increases flanking strikes, critical strike chance by 10%. I would assume that's for you and your pet, which is pretty good. You're not gonna really stack a lot of crit, so that helps your like big outside of the Mongoose window priority button um, hit harder if it crits, obviously. You're an agility based class, so your crit's gonna be kind of okay anyway but you're definitely not gonna stack crit early. Again, it's gonna be haste, mastery, crit, verse, most likely, but I'm not the math crafter for this, so they'll figure it out, I'm sure. Bird of Prey is Raptor Strike heals you for 10% of the damage it deals. It's really, really not a lot. 4,000 healing. It's not a lot. <laughs> it's, it's not a lot. It's okay. Uh, uh. But anyway, it's again, it's kind of boring. Terms of engagement is that the remaining cooldown on Harpoon is reset when you kill an enemy. Questing talent. Really questing. Possibly for PvP, for moving around a lot more if you land killing blows on people. Overall, it's for questing. You can just, like, 
Harpoon to a mob, kill it. Harpoon to the next mob, kill it. Harpoon to the next mob, kill it. All the while stacking your survivalist self-heal and healing yourself up and you keep going for it. So, Strength of the Mountain is 6% more physical damage increase. I think this was replacing something and they just gave you more physical damage. So it'll increase your bleed damage. It'll increase your Mongoose Bite damage, your Fury of the Eagle, whatever. Oh, okay. I guess. Hunter's Guile reduces the cooldown of traps by 20%. So all your traps are 20% lower cooldown, which is really good. One of the best ones you have so far here, other than just like tuning knobs. Uh, Embrace of the Aspects is 20% cooldown on your Aspects. So now Cheetah obviously makes sense, 2.4. Turtle also 2.4 is your defensives and your movement ability. But now Aspect of the Eagle is a 1.6, which actually is a yeah 136 cooldown. And it's a little strange due to the fact that now it will like never line up properly with other things. It never really lined up properly anyway with Fury of the Eagle rotation. So there'll be a weird like interplay of like delaying Aspect or delaying Fury of the Eagle, which I don't know which one you want to delay more. I would assume you delay Aspect to time up better with Fury. But it's it, it it it's just weird. I don't know. Blizzard doesn't want you to time everything up and just like make a, your you know one shot macros, right? But it does make the rotation kind of awkward. And once you get more into talents, you just have a lot of off timing abilities, which as a player, it just it's kind of annoying. But we know that Blizzard doesn't want you to just have every button in in one macro and then just go to town. It's that's kind of lame, right? Hunter's Bounty is reduces the remaining cooldown of your exhilaration by 15 seconds every time you kill an enemy. Questing, PvP, not really going to happen much in raids. If you get like a killing blow on like an ad and you get more exhilarations during the fight for more of your health stones, sure. But it's not incredibly powerful, I guess, overall. It's just kind of going to happen here and there. But again, questing. Uh, and world content. Fluffy Go is increases your pet's haste by 15%. So you're about to be here to your pet right now. Which, if I go to my character panel, for some reason my pet is not coming up. I should have a pet thing. We dismiss and resummon. Because I should have a pet window. So, call pet, we'll call Zappy. Where's the pet window at? Oh, it's under talents. The pet window's right here. So, ferocity, tenacity, and, and cunning. I'm not going to go through all these kind of things. I don't think any really changed before. Ferocity is for DPS, Tenacity is for like PvP and like weird stuff, and then Cunning is for uh, tanking. But I thought he had a pet window. Maybe the pet window is broken in the current build of the game. You should have a pet down here, or like right beside your character between reputation and not, so you can actually see its stats. Um, I'm not sure why that is. That's kind of weird. But uh, it gets 50% more haste, so it attacks faster, and it gives it more energy regeneration, I guess, or focus generation. I'm so sorry. Focus, not energy. Oh, no. But, um... It will help your pet have bite more often, which costs focus, and then does 100% more damage and costs double the focus when your pet has more than 50 as a focus dump. And then, of course, dash is a cooldown reduced by haste, I assume, and uh, growl is just growl. Yeah, because I think dash is being reduced by, let's see. Nope. Never mind. I have no idea. Faster auto attacks, I guess, and better focus generation. That's all it's giving you. It's not affecting any any cooldown nonsense, but I want to make sure. But all your pet stuff is right there. So that's not a bad one. I mean, your pet is there, but again, all your pet stuff is so passive. Uh, Lacerating Talons is 10% more damage dealt by Lacerate, which again, that's 10% more, and it's getting 6% here and 8% here. You can see 24% damage on Lacerate, which is pretty ridiculous. Bleeds ignore armor, remember that. And then Golden Circles here, your Golden Dragons, your Golden Perks, whatever you want to call them. Our Aspect of the Sky Lord, which will probably be your first one you go for. So Aspect of the Eagle increases all damage you deal by 30% for its duration as well now. So Eagle lasts for 10 seconds. And Sky Lord will last for 10 seconds as well. But it's a 30% damage amp during Eagle. So now there's this weird interplay where you want to make sure that you're ending all of your Eagle DPS windows with a Fury of the Eagle. So you can stack up a couple of Mongoose Furies, you know, three or four, maybe even five with RNG. And then you Fury for the increased damage from Mongoose Fury and the increased damage from Aspect of the Sky Lord. And it's pretty ridiculous. But then, of course, because you're adding time to that Fury of the Eagle window, 
then you might actually be able to get off like one more or two more mongoose bites afterwards. But the Fury of the Sky Lord buff, the aspect of the eagle, rather, sorry. Um, Fury of the Sky Lord eagle aspect of the uh, will then be gone. But it does help that initial burst window. And it also gives you an AoE synergy. Because Fury of the Eagle is very snap AoE. It's a conal AoE. So it gives you more of a snap AoE moment. And as WoW AoE is always like, Oh my god, Imp spawn, kill them! Ah! You know, there's no constant slow form. Like, we can kill these in 15 seconds, guys. Don't worry. No, it's like, kill them now or we're dead. So Fury of the Eagle stacking with all this stuff does give you a little bit more AoE synergy. Just a little bit more for that to help you out with. Next up, we have Eagle's Bite, which Harpoon applies on the trail. Oh, on the trail. I can't do Rexar, I'm sorry. A unique damage over time effect that's based on your attack power that deals damage over 12 seconds and refreshes by auto attacks. I have to go over here and kill a River Beast real quick. And this is actually bugged against target dummies. It does not refresh. Nor does it actually refresh, period. So what Eagle's Bite on the trail dot does is that it actually continuously stacks up to triple the duration. Basically what happens is that on the trail will never increase its damage done, but it will stack up forever. As you auto attack it, it'll just gain more time. So it just gains more and more time every auto attack and it will cap at 36 seconds. Yeah, 36 seconds. So basically this will be up forever. As long as you're target swapping and you're auto attacking as you do, then this, this this one little dot on the trail, which is ticking right now for 79.18, will always stay up on single targets. So that's that's not too bad. I'm gonna my pit real quick here. That's not too bad. It's okay. It's just attack power based dots. But as we get into this right now, you're gonna find out that Survival Hunter has more dots than Affliction Warlocks. Which Affliction Warlock might be a little salty about that comment, but it's totally true. So that's one of them dots. One of them dots. Also, my spear is like bugged. It's supposed to be mounted like this on my back, not like, like, uh, like this. So, I don't know. That's just a, a graphical bug. Get out of the way, tree! What are you doing in my shot? That's fine. Eagle's Bite. And then your most lackluster, most boringest talent of all time, which I guess is okay because the rotation and the talents make up for it, maybe. But it'll be less when you go for. It's called Talon Strike. Your basic attacks have a chance to trigger two rapid additional blows. It is Wind Fury. Let's wait and see if it ever procs. <clears throat> it your attack speed is obviously a thing like if you don't have a lot of haste you attack a lot less frequently but I think it might be kind of a lackluster perk because it's just auto attack damage and it'll proc it but as you gain more and more haste you'll be auto attacking more often in your rotation so maybe it'll be better but like it's so passive and blah and like rarely ever procs I did get it to proc during testing back to back twice but it's just an auto attack and it's just two extra attacks that proc off of it. It's a, it's a Talon Strike. And it's like 80% of your weapon damage or something like that. Or like 90% or something like that. It's not really powerful. I mean, it's two of them. So it's obviously... There it goes. Right there. Finally! That took, what? Almost a minute! Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, it's not that great. It's okay. But unless you gain more haste and it actually scales well. That it, you know, is happening frequently enough. It's meh. But I think buffing your overall aspect of the eagle rotation, aspect of the eagle, I can't say aspect today. Uh, then eagle's bite is passive, always da damage, and then this is like, meh. But I'm not a math crafter, so you'll figure that all out, and we'll jump over to talents now. Before I do that, of course, if you don't know what the this little paragoning artifact perks in here, you cannot unlock this until you have everything else unlocked. It is a way to end game, end game grind your artifact to be a little bit stronger over the course of the expansion. I imagine over the course of all of Legion, you might get three or four points into this, but I would not imagine many more than that. It costs hundreds of thousands of artifact power, as you see here. So we'll see how that works out. Voice of the Wild Gods, that was your passive there. So talent-wise, I'm going to go over your utility talents first, because they're kind of like ma, and then we'll go over everything else. So you have Post Haste, which is Harpoon, will free you from all movement impairing effects and give you a 60% uh, sprint after you do it. Post-haste is very, very strong. We also have Far Strider, 
Your ability critical strikes have a 10% chance to just reset the remaining cooldown on harpoon. It's a weird crit synergy to give you more harpoons if like your dots and stuff crit, I guess. I don't know. Ability criticals normally mean when the casting of the ability crits, you gain the the reset. But it's like, meh. And then you have dash, which dash is increases the aspect of the cheetah buffs by three seconds on each. So you'll gain 60, oh, sorry, six seconds of 90%. And 30% for 12. So it gives you uh, 6 seconds overall duration. But it gives you 3 on the very, very fast and beginning sprint. And then 3 on the slower sprint after that. But overall, it does increase your overall cheetah timing to 18 seconds in total. So it's pretty good. I like it. But I think post haste will probably win out in most situations. Because you're going to be using Harpoon to move around during raids and dungeons a lot more often. This will help you out. Obviously, it does remove your, your snares as well, and this won't. Your other utility here is Camouflage. One minute cooldown. You cannot use this in combat, where you blend into the surroundings, and you gain stealth for one minute, and while Camouflage, you will heal. You and your pet will heal for 2% every one second. Oh, no, that is only you. You will heal for 2%. Okay, it doesn't heal your pet anymore. Or didn't. I, or I missed it. I have no idea. But camouflage cannot be used in combat. So it can be used, obviously, to, you know, be camouflaged. But you can't use it in combat. And, of course, when you do an ability, it'll break. Yeah. So it'll break when you actually enter combat or whatnot. Ranger's Net is a ranged wing clip where you throw a net at the target and you snare them for three seconds. And it's a 50% snare for 50% for 15 seconds after it. I'm going to say 50% for 15. My brain read 50% twice. And Sticky Bomb is a 30 second cooldown where you throw a bomb at the target and it's a debuff where after three seconds it'll blow up for no damage and knock targets back. It's really lackluster. It's blah. Ranger's Dead is incredibly powerful. I'll show it off when the cooldown comes down here from Camouflage. But DPS wise now, you do have your 30 tier, which is kind of a pseudo DPS slash utility tier. So Improved Traps is 15% cooldown on Freezing Trap and 50% cooldown reduction on Explosive and Tar. So now your trap cooldowns are so small. So Freezing is 20, Explosive is 12, and Tar is also 12. Which is just ridiculously bonkers craziness. So as you're rotating in the cooldowns now, Explosive is 100% uptime. Because the dot lasts 10 seconds, and it takes 12 seconds for the buffed, the the ability to come back off cooldown so it and it costs nothing it just amplifies the damage of explosive trap even more a lot more because it's up all the time now which is a huge bonus overall you have caltrop which replaces tar trap which caltrops on the ground which will scatter in the area enemies who step on the caltrops will take some physical damage and also have a 70 percent movement speed reduction for 15 seconds 70% reduction for 15 seconds on a 12 second cooldown. You could perma slow the world with this, which is crazy. It's an AoE spammable 70% snare. Oh, it broke on that target after it procked and it fell off and it didn't proc again. That was weird. So, crazy good. It's super tar trap basically with some damage. I mean, you have steel trap, which replaces freezing trap. Where you will be able to throw a trap at a 48 second cooldown. It'll hit a target and it will incapacitate them the same way the actual freezing trap will do. But it puts a gigantic bleed on the target that lasts for 30 seconds and bleeds ignore armor. So there is the double effect right there. So it's incapacitated and mobilized. Right? So it mobilizes the first enemy that approaches it. So if you're putting up like a melee mob in a dungeon, it's basically still CC. Like if they're a melee character, they can't do anything. If it's, if it's a caster, that probably means they can still cast, but they can't move anywhere. So it's still like crowd controlling to a degree, but then they have a huge bleed damage on them. And then it, the immobilization effect will break on taking other damage, but the dot still stays. But so it's, this tier is like a trap talent, trap tier of talents, <laughs> not a trap talent, but um, they are trap talents though where you gain utility and damage, which is very much the signature of what a survival hunter is about. 
They're very trap-oriented, very little focus on your pet. Your pet has an integral play in flanking strike in your mongo mongoose bite, your mongoose bites. But overall, it's very trap-centric and dot-focused. So that's still trap, which, I, I don't know, improved traps right now based on numbers tuning is so much better than anything else, but other talents now, you have some passes up top here. So you have Animal Instincts, Flanking Strike will grant you a buff for seven seconds. So it can give you it can give you Instincts of the Raptor, which is 10% haste, Instincts of the Cheetah, which is 20% movement speed, which I just procced right now, or Instincts of the Mongoose, which is 10% mastery. Wow, double Cheetah? Way to help me out showing off this talent, though. It's a passive that gives you... It's a passive that gives you a two out of three dice roll to give you it. Are you kidding me, game? What are the odds of four cheetah in a row? What? So yeah, haste is obviously very good. Mastery is very good, your two best stats. And the other one though, the movement speed is fine. It's just not really good. You can stack multiple up if you have more haste because you reduce the cooldown of flanking strike. There you go, I have two up right there. I mean, movement speed is DPS, but it's a very weird, convoluted system to figure that all out. But movement speed is still damage, but it's not direct damage. The other options here are throwing axes, which is a 15 second, or a 15 second recharge produced by haste, where you have a ranged ability option, where you will throw three axes at the enemy, and each one deals physical damage. And I honestly think, depending on how you feel, it is a ranged ability. But you could be right up in their face and throw three axes in their face. It's on the global. The three axes happen over the global cooldown. And it does a lot of damage. So in a way, honestly, you could just take throwing axes as your go-to rotational button as well. Because it does cost 15 focus, which is really, really cheap. And it does give you a ranged ability as well. Because you have no ranged abilities normally. And it does tons of damage. It's not too bad. But obviously you have to keep up with the charge system and rotate that into the rotation and not make it interfere with anything else. The other option, of course, here is Way of the Machina Thal, which Raptor Strike, your lowest priority ability, except you have to make sure you use it more often with this one, is Way of the Machina Thal is Raptor Strike gives you Machina Thal Tactics, increasing your attack power by 5% for 8 seconds, up to 5 stacks. So this might be be set and forget. There is a focus per second amount you're going to want to achieve as a survival hunter to make sure this is a easy to rotate into your rotation. But having 20% of passive attack power all the time will make your bleeds higher, it'll make your magic damage higher from your traps, it'll make your mongoose bite window more potent, it'll make Fury of the Eagle stronger. All that stuff from keeping this stacked up, but it only lasts for 8 seconds. So it may be a better end game talent, or depending on how well your haste scales in like heroic gear to raids, because haste, um, Secondary stats, rather, have a very more linear scale in Legion, where they will not just keep going up and up and up and up like crazy. Overall, they will scale well at the start. You'll get to a certain, like, bread and butter zone that feels good with just blue dungeon gear. But then as you gain more and more raid gear, you're not going to gain, like, 400 haste on a piece of armor. It's going to scale very linearly. But as you gain a certain amount of haste, of course, Way of the Fall becomes better, easier to maintain, you have more focus generation, your global cooldown is lower, etc, etc. But Throwing Axe's damage is not terrible, and Animal Instincts is a good passive, but haste and mastery by themselves are good, but the mastery buff only really affects so much, and the haste one is the better of the three, but again, it's a passive and it's a random chance on a dice roll on Flanking Strike. Other DPS buttons come down here. You have Murder of Crows. It's the same exact thing it always does. Not incredibly powerful for survival hunters because your other two in this tier are much better. But Murder of Crows probably be really good for questing because as you harpoon leapfrog around the questing zones, giving a heal to yourself whenever you kill a target and reducing the cooldown of Exhilarate, which gives you more healing, you can Murder of Crows every single target because it deals damage, which I don't know why the, the stupid tooltip for Murder of Crows doesn't tell you what the damage it deals. Everything else does, but not this one where over the 15 second window it does damage and if the target dies under the effect it'll reset murder of crows which there are talents that are balanced around world content now so there you go otherwise you have dragon's fire grenade 
which is really fun. And again, you already have explosive trap. Dragon's fire grenade, that's a lot of damage. So why Dragon's Fire Grenade is doing that much damage? Uh, it's a 30 second cooldown, 40 yard range, no focus cost. You're currently a Dragon's Fire Grenade at the target. A target, you don't cast it like a trap. Um, explodes into flames, inflicting a whole bunch of fire damage over 8 seconds and reduces the movement speed by 20%. A little low slow there. The volatile flames on each target also scorch nearby enemies for a lesser amount every 1 second for 8 seconds. So you're seeing that in the combat log here, it's called Dragon's Fire Conflagration. And how that's working right now, is you're seeing two on the Raiders training dummies and two on the Dungeoneers dummies. So if you only hit one target with this, there is no conflag. The conflag is emanating off of each target hit. It's like Fire Nova, if you're familiar with how that works for Enhancement Shamans. Whereas, Every target, target A, B, C, D, E, F, G, whatever, never AoEs itself. So if you have Dragon's Fire Grenade on these three dummies right here, what's happening is this dummy is AoEing this one, this dummy is AoEing this one, and the middle dummy is AoEing the two on the sides, but they're never AoEing themselves. So the more targets you have, it's such a satisfying pop, boom, explosion. But um, Dragon's Fire Grenade scales with multiple targets. So if you have 19 targets being hit, you'll have 18 conflags going out. Like, it's a ton. I'm sure it has some AoE scaling cap because it would just scale so heavily out of control. But it's an AoE talent for sure. You could use it on single target if you don't like the other option in this tier, which is called Snake Hunter. Now, Snake Hunter is a single target increase or a slight AoE. Because, again, you can stack up Mongoose Fury charges, and then you can use the Fury of the Eagle to do AoE cleave burst damage based on your Fury charges. But Snake Hunter instantly on a one minute cooldown gives you three charges of Mongoose Bite. So by default, it's very, very simply, you can Mongoose Bite, Mongoose Bite, Mongoose Bite, Snake Hunter, Mongoose Bite, Mongoose Bite, Mongoose Bite, and then Fury of the Eagle at six stacks for 300% damage, right? So there is that bonus. If you have the Eagle right there, was ticking for, holy crap, 163,000 in the five ticks it does. And it was AOEing the two targets because I was kind of at an angle. So Snake Hunter is very single target. However, it can be used for burst AOE. Dragon's Fire Grenade has some burst, but the dot is so kind of low that it depends on how many targets you're hitting. And of course, it comes down to numbers tuning because, again, in the rotation, you already have so much that's happening in the Mongoose windows that Snake Hunter is good, but Dragon's Fire Grenade is just kind of a rotational thing you can do while you're not in the Mongoose windows because Snake Hunter only impacts the Mongoose window. Obviously, because it gives you Mongoose by charges. And because of the RNG involved in your pet and flanking strike, it's, it's weird to time because you could be like, okay, I'm trying to get in here with my Mongoose Bites, get a Flanking Strike off in there too, it gave me a charge, so now I have to do one more charge here, and then I have to Snake Hunter, and then I can do this, and then I got a Mongoose Bite again, and then I got one more time, and then I can maybe get it! Oh, yeah, I got it. And then you can get one more Mongoose Bite, and you know, it, it, it's, it gives you a weird extra layer of like, oh crap, syndrome, where if you use it, at one stack that you get randomly from like your pet auto attacks or whatever, then you waste a charge of Mongoose Bite. But you also have to make sure you're using it when you, after you use your flanking strike, because if that gives you a charge, you want to use that charge and not waste the charges you get from Snake Hunter. So there's a little interplay there, which is a new skill cap. As we went over with this Rebel Hunter on the stream, the skill floor is not too difficult, right? You have a kind of a, this mongoose bite phase and a not mongoose bite phase. It's pretty straightforward. But the skill ceiling for survival is still really high. And back where I said, you know, an, you know, 40-ish minutes ago, that because Survival Hunter has very real bonus of being able to more easily manipulate their burst windows for single target, even for AoE a little bit, that they can do this a lot more frequently, you cannot underestimate as many other DPS have much longer periods of time between those windows. Some do. 
like rogues or enhanced shamans, whatever, you have like a three minute cooldown or a two minute cooldown, right? You have a lot longer period of time between those windows of time where you can do a lot of damage. And Snake Hunter on a one minute cooldown and just the Mongoose Bite window shenanigans is much more frequent than their DPS. You can also take Mortal Wounds down here. Mortal Wounds. Each time your Lacerate deals damage, you have a 2% chance to gain a charge of Mongoose. This is not very often because obviously it only works on ticks of Lacerate and it's only 2% chance. I don't think I ever saw this proc in all of my testing today. It's just a very, very low chance, but if it does, it obviously gives you a huge amount of damage and there was a lot of conjecture in chat like, well, why is this any good? Like, it's such a low chance, but like that 2% chance could give you like a quarter of a million damage all of a sudden on one global. So it kind of has to be tuned really low because of the fact that it could give you a lot of damage instantly. But I think it was also not tuned yet because Mortal Wounds you used to be able to stack an AoE bleed that would give you Mortal Wounds and now that's gone. So I don't know if they're going to retune this. Obviously numbers are not tuned. So, but that's a, a passive for more Mongoose Bites. Other option here is Butchery, which replaces Carve. And right now the artifact perk uh, Hell Carver does not work with Butchery. But Butchery is literally Thrash. It actually gives you the Thrash effect and sound, and it's an AoE butt cleave. So what this does is it is a huge damage jump over Carve by default. It's physical damage and it's 40 focus and it has a recharge system based on your haste as well. So it's, this is burst AOE is butchery because you could Mongoose bite up Fury of the Eagle, like right as AOE is coming out. So you could Fury of the Eagle into all the AOE and then spam three butcheries in a row. Right? And you're obviously going to have, you know, you're, you're going to have your, your explosive trap out there and probably your Dragon's Fire grenade going as well. And then you can spam Butchery. So you have a potential to add a lot of AoE damage. Which, you know, like a Feral Druid, AoE is like, eh, just go single target. But for survival, there's enough back and forth, I think, because of how your single target and AoE synergies kind of play together because of Fury of the Eagle, which kind of saves the spec. You can kind of go an AoE build or a very single target build, which is very apparent in how you can choose your talents. The other one down here is called Serpent Sting, which targets hit by your Raptor Strike and Carve have are now a Serpent Sting dot, which inflicts nature damage over 15 seconds. Good passive, strong passive, synergizes well with Way of the Mock and Fall for more attack power, stronger dots. Also gives you a little bit of AoE damage on Carve because you can spread it with Carve. You get the synergy right there. But overall, it's a dot. It's another damage over time effect. It's just a, a, another passive source of damage. But it, it, you know, if you don't want a random chance for mongoose bites, and you don't need butchery. Serpent sting all the way, baby. Not too bad. Down here, of course, we have another dot called Aspect of the Beast. Aspect of the Beast. Aspect of the Beast. I can't say that word. So you get a flanking strike bonus based on your pet's specialization. Cunning is a movement snare on the target. Tenacity is your pet gets a sh little little shield wall for extra tanking potential. And Ferocity is a really weak dot. And again, numbers aren't tuned, but this dot is really weak. 5,000? It's really weak. It's always up, sure. But it's just really weak. And it's a passive though, so whatever. The other options here are Spitting Cobra, which is a woman to cool down where you summon a Spitting Cobra for 30 seconds that attacks the target for a little bit of nature damage over two sec every two seconds for 30. So it attacks 15 times and you gain focus while it's out. It is literally just a Searing Totem. And it's the old crappy model. It is not good. It is a huge bonus to your focus generation, but it's just this really that started out of freaking Zul Farak right there, right? So you get a lot of energy regeneration. It helps you. Three per second is, is a lot. But its damage is also awful. And again, damage is not tuned. But why that has to be a big deal is because, again, it's a one-minute cooldown. Your aspect of the eagle is 1.36 minutes. And then your, your um, Fury of the Eagle is 45. So it's like a weird off-time situation. And the... 
best looking talent to take right now, which I'll take momentarily because that's on cooldown, is called Expert Trapper. So Tar Trap basically gains Entrapment. The trap um, things moving through the Tar Trap have a chance to be rooted in place. Freezing Trap, when it expires or is broken, it pops a AoE slow on targets in the area for 50% for 4 seconds. Steel Trap, when it lands, it deals immediate bleed damage when triggered. So it deals an extra bonus physical damage uh, initial hit. Bleed damage again in Renora's armor. And your other option here, which is scaling improperly, is Explosive Trap's damage over time effect is doubled. But right now, again, Explosive Trap, initial damage and dot damage are the same. So they need to fix that or rebalance it in some way because this does so much damage. 200,000 damage in a 12 second cooldown with improved traps. It is huge damage and it's so easy. Trap costs nothing, 400,000? That's so crazy. So I, if, if only it affects the dot, okay. It gives it a little more AOE synergy. It gives it single target synergy. It also, kind of means that you could take Steel Trap and Expert Trapper and have like extra single target buttons to weave in when you're not in the Mongoose window. But it's it's pants on heads ridiculous right now. And they have to nerf it or nerf Explosive Trap overall. They have to buff Aspect of the Beast and change Spitting Cobra to do more damage because it's just pitiful. Like Spitting Cobra right now does 4,000 damage 15 times. That's it. Which is like nothing. I can't do math off the top of my head, but it's not 400,000 crit on a 12 second cooldown and then 400,000 damage or 200,000 damage because uh, the dot can't crit. The dots can, but um, the um, the dot like applications don't crit. Actually, can I even crit? I have 21% critical strike chance. Can an explosive trap crit? This is a lot of explosive traps that I didn't see during testing that just are not critting. Maybe it can't crit. The, the landing definitely does. Maybe it can't crit. I have no idea. But that's the survival hunter. I'm going to show you all the dots you can have up here real quick. I had a, a bar placed just for this test. Let me get out of combat real quick. At the end of this video, I'll show you all the dots you can have to make your Affliction Warlock friend salty. So you take Steel Trap, Expert Trapper, Serpent Sting, uh, Way Long of Thaw, I'm not going to care about balancing, Dragon's Fire Grenade, and then you, of course, have Harpoon and Explosive Trap, and Flanking Strike, uh, we can take Flanking Strike, would be Aspect of the Beast, and then Lacerate. So this, this bar down here is all dots. Not, I guess, not Fury of the Eagle, right? That's, that's a damage over time channel effect, but if you go with this, oops. Yay, the sploosh effect is still broken. So again, I'll wait till that to cool down. I hit the wrong button. I usually have Harpoon on the asterisk here, not on Y. So let me uh, wait for that to come up. So if you go in here on the target dummy right here, watch all these dots. It's a little ridiculous. So this and this and this and this and this and this and this and, this and, this. <laughs> and then this. So that's seven dots in total you can stack up on a mob. You got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then you can channel one for technically eight. So eat your heart out. Affliction Warlocks, thank you all so much for watching. Um, I don't know what you leave me in the comments below. Just say we did it if you made it all the way through this video. Leave me a like if you enjoyed the preview. Uh, if you have a hunter joke, go for it. I guess any of these videos you can put hunter jokes in the comment section. Uh, check out the video description box below for more information about how to support my channel here, what I do here live streaming and making videos on YouTube, as well as the VOD, the bug report, the notes, all the stuff is written down below in the video description box and linked, as well as a link to my channel guide, which can link you to all the testing I have done and what is yet to come. Oh my goodness, Survival Hunter feels pretty good, honestly. It looks pretty neat, but numbers, the numbers, the numbers, the numbers. All right, friends, I'll see you all in the next Legion testing video. There's the button.